Hi and welcome to this tutorial on adding detail to our octopus tentacle. So this geometry, let me just talk a second about that. The, uh, the only reason I have these different colors in here for these suction cups is so that I could tell them apart um, and, and so I could tell the bottom of, apart from everything and then I also have a cloner in here and right now it's turned off and it has I think 300 spheres in it and so I'm going to turn that on, um, and that's why I have sent it to you turned off. If my computer is pretty powerful and it can, it does not do well with this many, um, so I suggest leaving this off until you're ready to render. Now I I put 300 because I wanted a lot of bumps on this tentacle, but I'm going to turn that off. And if you don't think your computer can handle uh, 300 uh, just go into your cloner with it still off and change this number down here to whatever you feel comfortable with or just leave it off altogether if you want um, you can always play around with all this different stuff later and I'll just talk a second this geometry is pretty simple um, basically I started with one suction cup here that I modeled from a tube object okay and um, you know from a tube primitive oops I didn't want to do that um, from this guy right here and I just messed around with it tried to create a suction cup that um, that I thought looked pretty cool and then uh, I just took a, a cylinder and squashed it down to create the ridges so you can you know everything is in your file just like this and so you'll be able to uh, go back and and reverse engineer all of that so basically what we're going to do is create a depth map. And so if you've created a depth map before, then you probably know how to do all this. And, and if you haven't, then, you, then I'll tell you that these colors and none of this means anything because all we're going to render is the depth of this object. So let's get started by putting a camera into the viewport. And I'm going to not view through that camera just yet until we get it set up. And I'm going to turn on these camera settings. So uh, the first thing we want to do is come down okay. to the object manager. And then let's set the zoom to 0.683. Now, the reason that I'm using these, core, these exact figures is because I've already had this set up, of course. When you're setting this up on your own, these things will change. And uh, you'll be able to, to figure that out. Um, when when you're looking through it, but just to save time, I wanted to uh, put these numbers in, and um, and then we can just u use that. So in X um, minus 14, I have already I've been changing the zoom and distance. Let me go back. If you didn't see what I did, the zoom is here, and the focal focus distance is here. So I'm going to go back in the coordinates tab, minus 14 on Y is 8595 on uh, Z is going to be 2970 and I tried to keep these fairly not too you know even so it's not too crazy uh, okay H is 0 uh, P is minus 90 which is just facing the camera downward and then 180 so that it actually is pointing in the correct direction. Okay, and so um, the one last thing we want to do is go into the details tab and you can see here this front blur. Now we're not using front blur. It's not, there's not going to be any blur. Uh, and I'm just going to set this to 182, okay, because I know that's where it's supposed to be. But I'm going to show you what that is now and I'm going to turn this off. And let's go into your uh, right view and that is F3 on the keyboard and so right now I have the camera uh, set uh, is not on in my filter so I'm gonna go down and make sure that that's on so now you see how a parallel camera works the parallel camera looks straight down from every direction okay and so the thing that we're setting that we want to set up and I've already given you the numbers on this but I do want to show you this Let's turn these suction cups off for a second, and that helps a little. So there are actually, well, I may have to turn it all off so you can see what this is. So there's actually two lines here on this camera, and if you see them here, 
and this one controls where the bottom wants to be and and it wants to be midway down through the geometry and if you see the focus distance is moving for that and so if I turn just these the base on what I want to do is I want to get this line uh, probably about midway on the geometry here if you can see that and and because of the weirdness of this setup and I tried to get the centers of all these cylinders uh, pretty much in the same place uh, let's go back here you just want to make sure that it goes down into the geometry everywhere and if I put this back to 8618 <clears throat> you can see that line is right there it's below where all the geometry intersects so the other setting is this top line and this is oh, details I'm sorry and that is the end here in this uh, map front blur and so if you bring this down and this you want to get we're going to go all the way over to the left or to the right for this because you want to get this yeah, I'm going to have to go down just a little because I got to be able to see yeah so you want this right near the top of your geometry but you really don't want it to intersect now that's set up for this but we need to turn our suction cups on so I'm going to move this up and we're going to turn the suction cups back on and then we're going to pull this down until it barely almost touches this geometry on the right side and I think that works pretty well so I did want to show you even though we had the exact figures on that I did want to show you um, what that was actually doing <clears throat> and all the other settings were just choosing this camera and then the coordinates were just to get it in this position okay so pretty much we're set up and if I click this uh, parallel camera on we should see some stuff and I am still in the um, in the in the perspective viewport but we're going to use uh, the parallel camera now and so what we're doing is looking straight down perfectly straight down onto the tentacle and all these suction cups and uh, the next thing we want to do basically is just set up our render setting so I'm going to turn this on up, and I'm going to get out of this camera for just a second and go back to this camera so we can see these render settings and I'm gonna go up and grab this and mine I'm gonna undock it so that we can see these okay so basically we want to come in here and we want to send uh, set the physical camera and then we're gonna go into the physical camera and we're going to change this sampling quality to high and then we're gonna and that is actually that for that so we want to go into multipass we want to click this on okay and uh, let me pull this way up so you'll be able to see and so we want to come into the multipass tab and come down to depth okay put that in there <clears throat> and then under save we're going to and this is the only one we're going to save I'm actually going to turn that one off and we're only going to save this ping and so you can save this wherever you want uh, I'm going to just save it back into not there um, just save it into this and I'll put it in I'll just save it here uh, depth map uh, let's let's make that a little better tentacle and I'm gonna make it a because we're gonna do two of these and so just save them wherever you know you'll be able to find them again actually if I save them in here then I know it'll be good so I'm gonna go save uh, and then the output should already be on your file should already be set to 300 by 1200 and um, that 300 by 1200 again is an arbitrary um, amount but uh, if you, oh, this is where I'm going to hit Command V and show you. This is what I've set up in here. And I, so that is the 300 by 1200. Okay. And so let's go back into this camera. All right. And so basically, we want to hit render. Okay. Now you're not seeing much happening. 
and it is rendering this out. So if we go to layer and you have to put on single pass and then click on depth and now you can see what we're rendering out. Now there is one thing that I forgot to mention and I think it's set by default but we're going to check it um, and that is in your render settings where are we in the render settings um, by default uh, in the save this is set to 16 bits per channel and you definitely want to leave it there um, for that because you'll get m much more gradation and smoother gradations because this is all we're looking at this is all we're using and I know it doesn't look like much but uh, it's amazingly powerful so before we get out of here so actually I'm gonna redo mine because I forgot to turn the bumps on so I'm gonna turn my bumps on <laughs> wait a minute for my computer to catch up and I am going to hit render again and I'm gonna say yes okay almost there all right, so I think it's done. Yep, and I'm going to close that out. And now all I want to turn off is this null with, it says suction cups. Okay, so that now we just have these ridges and the bumps because we're going to use this, and this is a, uh, like I explained uh, in the, the blurb about this tutorial, is that we really should uh, unwrap the UVs for something like this but you know we're just for this tutorial I just want to be able to show you how this works how these depth, depth map, maps work and so um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, apply this texture these depth maps uh, to our geometry in a little different way um, but we do need a top for our um, for our tentacle and so that's what this is going to be so you want to go into your render settings and in the save just uh, come out here and we have tentacle a and if you can't get to that if you just keep selecting all of it and just run across you get to it uh, and then just put in B and then that will be our top and we because we don't want to overwrite what we already did hit render okay we're just about there all right, so we can close that, and you can save your file. And um, if you haven't downloaded the other uh, file for the tentacle, uh, you might want to do that now, and then we'll jump over to that next. All right. Okay, so we're back. Uh, hopefully you've downloaded Tentacle Plane uh, to get started on this next part, and it's pretty simple. Um, tentacle much like we created in the first four tutorials and this will be our bottom uh, it's kind of a flatter side so let's get started setting up our depth maps um, so actually what I want to do is I'm going to delete this material off of here and I'm going to let's see that's for our plane we want to leave that and we're going to put this as suction cups something that we can tell the difference and I'm just gonna make a copy of this and just put uh, I'm gonna actually just put put B and this is actually a but I'm gonna leave it as suction cups and then I'll put a on there okay and you can put whatever you want to do to to differentiate between them so I already have two two uh, selection tags in here and if you double click this first one you'll see it selects the bottom and then this other one selects the top so we'll just leave it for the bottom we're going to do the bottom first and uh, we'll go into your suction cup a material first off I want to go into the uh, color <clears throat> the only reason I'm doing that is we so that we can see how that is mapping okay so with this geometry selected let's drag that material right onto that selection and deselect it and go back here and that doesn't really look quite right okay so the reason is is because of the way this is mapping okay and one of the easiest ways and this is a pretty cool cool trick is I have a plane in here let me turn that on 
uh, and you should have one in yours too. And I am going to turn off uh, reflectance because I don't want any of that would go. If you switch off your cone, which is, should have been relabeled tentacle, and you were just looking at the plane, this plane is, let's see, is exactly 300 by 1200, okay? So it's the exact size of our depth map. And um, you can see that this is mapping on here perfectly. Now I'm actually going to go into the side view. It's F3, and if you don't have the display set to garage shading, you might want to put that on so that we can see this. Um, and so let's turn our our cone tentacle back on and if you still have this palette from the uh, tentacle tutorials just turn x-ray on if you don't all you have to do is go right here and this switches it on now we see that our uh, where our suction cups are gonna fall on our tentacle okay once we've remapped this so they they fall pretty close to the edges because of this way that we're we're applying this texture. So I, I want to remap these suction cups a little bit. So we zoom in and if you I'm on the plane right now and if you just pull this edge in you can see that these suction cups start to squash in a little bit. And um, that's what I want. I want to get them away from this edge. Alright, so if you come over to this tag on our cone tentacle and you right click there's a fit to region command okay so I'm gonna select that and now you get this little crosshairs and what it's asking for is for you to define the region that you want to map this material to so we know that this plane is exactly the size of our texture coming over this top corner and you want to draw this box down perfectly as close as you can get it over this plane okay even though we're mapping this geometry to the cone so when I release it you saw something happen there let's turn the plane off and now if you turn your x-ray off you can see that um, that material now has has mapped perfectly let's go back into the front viewport has mapped perfectly to that selection okay and so that's good so let's go back into our side view F3 I am going to switch this camera from right to left let's click the other polygon selection and in our B material same we did before let's turn the reflectors off right now go into our color and we want to grab our other depth map B and put it in there you can just turn this plane back on and we know that that's the mapping we want so I'm gonna get out of this polygon mode um, we need to oh we didn't do the most important thing we didn't apply this texture to our polygons so now that that's applied and we can see it's showing up and we don't have to turn on x-ray or anything for this and you just come down right click and we're going to fit to region again Go up to our plane and just try to get it as close as possible. And that should have done it. And you turn that plane off. And I'm going to go back into the uh, perspective viewport F1. And so now we've got that texture mapped perfectly on there. So far we have nothing but this depth map, which is rendering black and white. Let's go back into this material. And a lot of times depth maps are used in the normal tab or in the bump tab but we want to use it in the displacement tab because these depth maps are really powerful so go up and get your color tab If you come down over this icon it'll change just click on it drag it up to displacement and just drop it right into the texture field and then come back to the color and just dial that down to zero okay and so we want to come into our other material and do the same thing. We want to grab this from the color. Oops, let's, uh, let's turn on displacement first. Grab this and drop it right into the texture field. And then come back to the color and just 
dial that down to zero. So let's go back to our uh, suction cup material and go into displacement and set up this displacement. So it's at five right now and that's fine. This is fine. But this is where we want to work here. I'm going to turn on sub polygon displacement. And I know that five worked a little better because I've messed around with this. And we're basically going to turn all these on. Okay. And so uh, if we come over here and do a quick render, you can see that we have some pretty cool detail. And this is, as you can see, actually projecting into 3D space. This isn't just uh, an illusion of uh, texture. And so I'm going to crank this up a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to crank it up quite a bit. Um, and you can see that, that, you know, it gets distorted and it's not something we want to use. But that's pretty amazing with just a texture. And, as you may have noticed, how quickly that renders. So let's get this back down to um, the 5 and uh, re-render that. So let's crank it up to 10, see what that looks like. That looks really good. Now, right now we have it set on intensity centered, and I want to show you what happens with that by going up here and getting an interactive region, and we don't want it that mode. We want to pull it down to here, and I'm going to pull this up a little bit. So once that re-renders, which it already did, you can see what's happening here. Our tentacle is now a little bit skinnier than our geometry, and the reason is because if you haven't used this much, intensity centered pushes the geometry in both directions, both in and out, whereas intensity only pushes it out. So, and I, I'm going to stay in that mode because I don't want to really uh, make our tentacle skinnier. And I'm going to get rid of this. So, um, we're going to need uh, more power here. We're going to have to push this out farther because we're not pushing it in at all to get the same result. And that actually looks that actually looks pretty good. And you can, you know, it's personal personal taste. You can push it out to wherever you want. But we're getting let me get in closer. We're getting some really cool detail on these uh bumps and uh you know look at the the tiny little detail. Now you could even um probably bring this subdivision level up one more. Let's see what it looks like at six. It's going to affect your render time. Um, and that's actually getting, well, I don't know. It just depends. I'm going to crank back down to five. I don't want to lose that much, that much render time, uh, especially for this tutorial. But that really looks good. And then if you go up to your render settings and, uh, and turn on ambient occlusion, you'll see that, of course, it's going to affect the render time. But now you're really getting some some definition. So it's not matching up good with the top because we haven't changed that. And so let's go back here because I'm short-term memory here. 15, 5, and everything else is on. Go in here. We're going to make this 15, 5. Turn everything on. And we want to make sure that this is to intensity. Now we should get a pretty seamless... Uh, tentacle and seamless detail. But there's one thing happening here, and this is just a product of the way we're mapping this. And this is why I suggested in the blurb at the beginning of this tutorial that you really, to do this right, you want to <clears throat> UV map this. And that's these little uh, stretched bumps. And that's what's happening because we're, we started out this is actually flat map. So if you click once on this, you'll see this is flat map, which is, is, is like a projection mapping and kind of exactly what we did. And so when it got near this bump that's near this, this seam of our two materials, it's actually stretching it down to the seam. And then this top texture is stretching it down to the seam. So that this particular bump probably fell right on the seam. If you UV map this, this will never happen. And here's another thing that happens uh, when you map the way we're doing it. And there is a fix for it. I have a spline wrap object, and it's when you start to distort this or animate these tentacles, okay? 
So let's go in here and get in a little close and let's re-render this. And you can see how these are stretching. And so there is a way to fix it. So if we go out and click that out and go into the cone and cinema, right click cinema tags and come down to stick texture and then record that, then you can uh, re-engage that spline wrap and you'll see that these are uh, staying perfectly the way they're supposed to be. So that's how you would fix that if you really wanted to uh, to map these textures this way. But it's really not the best way. But if you UV map these, uh, if you un unwrap the UVs and, and map it to the UVs, then this will always stay like this. But it, it really creates a nice effect. You get some great detail. And the, the great part is it still renders really quickly, I think. And you're not dealing with all that geometry. And I mean, you, these bumps you wouldn't even be able to do, but you're not dealing with all this suction cup geometry in your scene as you're trying to, uh, to put your scene together and animate it. And um, I use this quite a bit because <laughs> the, the detail is amazing. And, uh, and you still have a lot of uh, viewport re uh, reaction. So um, that's about it. And um, see you next time. Bye.